Mr. Hamish, can you explain to us what happened to the colonial collection? It seems somewhat depleted. But, uh, oh, most likely maintenance work, tidying up. You're not sure, then? But you're the deputy director. Well, I am busy. I cannot be everywhere at once. As deputy director, how was your relationship with Montague done? To be honest with you, Mr. Holmes, it could have been better. You see, every Tuesday he would carry out his inspection of the gardens, but it was solely to make an impression, a great pretense that he cared at all. He would give out absurd orders, ignoring anyone else's opinion. He would then disappear for the rest of the week. He was what some might call a man of action. I'd say rather he was overzealous and chaotic. So after all, it was no wonder, perhaps, that he ended up like that, if you take into consideration his kind of lifestyle. You mentioned that Mr. Dunn led a particular lifestyle. Well, it's no secret that he enjoyed, uh, celebrating, shall we say? He was a member of the London Smart Set. He was famous for it. That and... And? He had an eye for the ladies, to put it mildly, Mr. Holmes. Mr. Hamish, can you tell us who holds the keys to the locked greenhouses? That would be Albert, Mr. Dunn's son. Yes, Albert keeps all the keys, and one can only imagine why. What do you mean? Well, he was never interested in Kew Gardens before. And now, all of a sudden, he is trying to act as if he owns the place. I think he wants to take over the management here. <laughs> He'd do better to leave that to me. He has no experience. No, none at all. What is your opinion of Albert as a student of botany? He's useless. I often tell him so, and I can only give him cleaning tasks. Botany is not his life's work, and his father well knew it. He was furious about it. He was? Oh, yes. He forced his son to work here, and he never missed an opportunity to criticize him publicly. Are you able to elaborate on that? Well... For example, with our last exhibition here, Mr. Dunn had Albert make a presentation speech. But then, while the lad was speaking, Mr. Dunn interrupted him, asking him difficult questions, making him look like a failure. It was with the intention of making a fool of him, Mr. Holmes. That must have been terribly humiliating. Yes, he was crushed, and he had to leave. Everybody was making fun of poor Albert. That is, except for Miss Margaret White, who is such a nice lady and who always takes pity on Albert. You mentioned a Miss White. Would you tell us more about her? She is a student who works here part-time. She is quite charming indeed. She possesses a great talent for botany. You should take a look at some of her experiments that she carried out in the laboratory. Ah, oh, if only she were not so naive. Why naive? The way she used to flutter around Mr. Montague Dunn. And he... why, he couldn't help but be flattered by all her attention. How could an intelligent woman such as Miss White not see through his game? I can only scratch my head and wonder. You tell me, Mr. Hamish, do you grow the more deadly variety of plant here? You mean insectivorous? Yes, but nothing larger than that. Thank you, Mr. Hamish. We shall continue our investigation. Who is Miss Margaret White? Ah, she is the young lady who studies with me. She visits here sometimes to help out with the greenhouses. In fact, she should be here today. She wanted to work at the seed house. That's the small greenhouse across from the large glass house. We noticed that a part of the colonial collection has been cleared. Ah, at the moment I'm just dealing with the storage room. I don't know much about the other rooms. I imagine that your relationship with your father may have been a strained one. Yes. I cannot say that he was a kind man, for he never listened to me at all. He forced me to work here. But now, after his death, I have been pondering it over. Perhaps he wasn't so wrong about me after all. I have to follow his path, and I have to manage Kew Gardens, and I can do it. I can be as good as any other who works here. 
Would you please tell us about Martin Hamish, the deputy director? Well, I have to tell you that Mr. Hamish is not and has never been the deputy director of Kew Gardens. My father would not have tolerated it. Indeed? Well, that is most interesting. He told us that he was. Yes, because he believes that the management should be passed down to him now that my father is dead. But in actual fact, Mr. Hamish only has the honour of being the garden's longest-serving employee. In fact, if we are to think logically at all, it should be me who takes over the management of Kew Gardens. Do you not have a good relationship with Mr. Hamish? I suppose so. But we have very little in common. Mr. Hamish loves his plants and Kew Gardens, and I cannot say that I share his passion. I see. And how was his relationship with your father? Oh, he hated my father. It was obvious. He would be furious whenever my father boasted of Kew Gardens in the newspapers or at conferences. He was convinced that my father was stealing all of the credit for himself. But my father treated Mr. Hamish in the same way as he treated anyone. Dismissively. With indifference. Do you hold the keys to all of these locked doors? Yes, you can have them. But I cannot give you the keys to the cloakroom. The employee's effects are private. I am sure you understand. Thank you, young man. We shall see you again soon. French wine, a remarkable vintage. Champagne, Montague Dunn had good taste. Newspapers discussing Kew Gardens. A photograph of Montague Dunn and Reynold Hamish.
I suggest that we don't tell Miss Margaret White about this document. Locked. There was a bottle here. It left behind a trace of the substance that pervaded the laboratory. Gold dust? Good heavens. What's it doing here? The gold is almost immune to chemical attacks. So it may be a valuable auxiliary for various experiments. But why would anyone perform such experiments in a botanical garden? Several drops of the substance were spilled. Someone carried this bottle around. Several drops of the substance were spilled. Someone carried this bottle around. The bottle is no longer here, but it is possible to detect a faint scent. We need a good nose. It appears as though the protective equipment is missing from here. Gloves, waterproof aprons, everything one might need for self-protection. Do they grow dangerous plants here? Such masks are generally worn when dealing with toxic chemicals. This is a table for experiments. It resembles my own. Only this one is kept in good order, Holmes. A phonograph used for voice recording. Remarkable. Yes, this is quite a modern laboratory. Study report by Martin Hamish. And it seems clear from these multiple experiments that plants to respond to their environment and have a form of consciousness. Margaret White, February 1895. Report number 245. Study report. chemicals, a sufficient quantity for some serious experiments. A botany book. This student's book belongs to Albert. the employee's cloakroom. 
locked. Holmes, Albert Dunn didn't give us the key to this door. It does not matter. We will open it.
open. Miss White's locker. Apparently, Miss White is a capable student. A draft of the letter that Miss White sent to her parents. These jewels must be worth a small fortune. A vanity purse. It is of high quality. Martin Hamish's locker. A review on rare and exotic plants. Martin Hamish has written several pieces. Martin Hamish studied chemistry. Interesting. Father and I, Kew Gardens. Albert's Locker. Specialist articles on shipyards and ship construction. Albert Dunn has a great passion for shipbuilding and the sea. A rejection letter from the British Royal Naval College. Young Albert, standing with a woman in front of London University. <laughs> 